Hi everyone, welcome back to Sentinels of the Multiverse, the video game. We're going to get our first game underway now that the Rook City Expansion Pack is out. Let's take a look at what this most recent expansion pack added. The Chairman as a villain, the Matriarch, Plague Rat, and Spite. As far as heroes go, Expatriate and Mr. Fixer were added. My plan for this series, I think, is to go through each villains one by one, probably starting with the easiest and moving my way up. I may not necessarily beat every boss. Uh, some of them are extremely difficult. The Chairman, ranked as a 4. Matriarch, ranked as a 4. They're very, very difficult. We'll see. Um, at some point, I'm sure I will unlock the variants for each villain and play them, as well as the heroes as well. I'm not exactly sure. Looks like they actually got the variants for Expatriate and Mixer Fixer, and they were not in earlier today, but... Looks like they're in now, and I don't have any of the variants unlocked, but I do want to make videos for those. I don't know if there are videos for those. I know that um, that the method of unlocking the variants has been found, but I don't know of any uh, of any videos that have been released to do that. So I think I'll start with Baron Blade. He's kind of considered the uh, the face of the villains. He's kind of the the, the most well known, I suppose. And Sentinels of the Multiverse. And he's a difficulty one, so it seemed appropriate that we start here. Uh, Baron Blade is a mad scientist left over from World War II. And his nemesis, I'll go ahead and drag him down to get started, is Legacy. And it makes sense, I think, for every villain I'm going to try to play using at least their nemesis. I don't know if, uh, if every nemesis has been released for every villain. Uh, every hero's nemesis, is, that is. Um, but we'll try to do as many as we can. So we'll definitely start off with Legacy here. And I think for at least the first episode, I'm going to stick with mostly heroes that are from the base game. So Tempest is really important for some damage and uh, maybe a little bit of healing. Who else? Let's do Bunker. And let's do Visionary and Wraith. I think we'll set it up like that. This is a pretty strong team, I think. Um, we have some, some tanking and some damage assistance. We have some damage here with these three in the middle, a little bit of healing with Tempest, and uh, deck control with Visionary. So let's pick an environment as well. Um, let's go with, I think, Insula Primalis would be a good one. And we'll fight. Now there's been a few changes um, with how the game works. From my tutorial video I made a few days ago, this most recent patch, 1.3 I believe it was, came out with uh, the Rook City expansion. And a few... N not mechanics, but how the mechanics are presented are a little different, and I'll go over those. So, at last, the destruction of my greatest foe is at hand. Legacy shall fall. Legacy says, stand down, Baron. The price of your hatred should not be the entire planet. So sure enough, the mad scientist has created a device that will bring the moon crashing into the Earth. And this is something that's a little different before. In the tutorial, uh, I was playing against Ambuscade, and his turn went automatically and I just had to wait for it to be done. But now, there's this nice, wonderful start game button, so I can kind of analyze the field before things get started. So let's take a look at Baron Blade first. At the start of the game, Baron Blade enters play Terra Lunar Implosion Beam Inventor side up. So here he is, right here. One mobile defense platform is put into play, and then the villain deck is shuffled. So that will happen as soon as I click on start game. But what does he do during gameplay? At the start of the villain turn, if there are 15 or more cards in the villain trash, Baron Blade's Terra Lunar Implosion Beam activates, pulling the moon into the earth. Game over. Now if you remember, every, every, every turn, every round, the villain will play at least one card. So at max, I have 15 rounds to knock out 40 hit points. And if you look at the very bottom, when Baron Blade would be destroyed, his villain card actually flips to the other side, which I'm not going to bother with this right now. But I have to go through 40 hit points when within, at max, 15 turns, and it looks like I have 30 hit points to deal on this side. But Baron Blade himself doesn't do any direct damage as, as, far, as, this, as far as this goes. But his, his cards, the cards that he draw, probably will. So we'll start game, and there's that mobile defense platform. While this is up, Baron Blade is immune to damage. And here's his first card. Whenever Baron Blade would be dealt fire, cold, or lightning damage, redirect that damage to the hero target with the lowest HP. So Tempest here is uh, a lot of lightning damage, but he might be the only one that does lightning, fire, or cold. So
so let's take a look at Legacy's cards. He's going to go first. Remember that the order that the heroes play in is in the top left here. So we'll go with Legacy. Each player draws a card. Always good. When this card enters play, regain 1 HP. Increase damage dealt by heroes by by hero targets by 1. Super good card. Uh, and another one. We have two. Villain cards cannot be played at the end of your turn. The villain target with the highest HP deals Legacy 2 energy damage. So Legacy takes a bit of damage, but villain cards can't be played. Super good. It would delay this whole bring the moon into the earth thing for one turn. Oops, that was the wrong card. And that seems to be it. I think I'm going to play Inspiring Presence. Uh, the, the healing is wasted a little bit, but I want to get that offensive damage out there as quickly as possible. And Legacy's power. Remember, every hero can use one power unless other cards say otherwise. And some cards will add powers, but by default, everyone has one on their base card here. So, Galvanize. This is an insanely good power. Until the start of your next turn, increase damage dealt by hero targets by one. So we use this power. And so now everybody's power is increased by two if they do any kind of damage. There's this card draw from the end of his turn. Now it's Wraith. Impromptu Adventor. Impromptu Ad Inventor. Draw a card. Search your deck for an equipment card. Either put it into your hand or into play. Shuffle your deck. You may play a card. So this just gives me a free card I can play. Um, Razor Ordnance deals 3 projectile damage, so I know that I'm going to want to play this. Um, infrared Eyepiece and Mega Computer are not as good as Razor Ordnance. I want to start getting damage on Baron Blade quickly, because I only have 15 turns. Which seems like a long time, but it's not. So she's going to draw, and I can search, and I'm definitely going to take... Uh, let's see, where is it? Not Utility Belt. Uh, Micro-Targeting Computer, here we go. Increase projectile damage dealt by the Wraith by 2. We're going to go ahead and put that into play, and now we can play another card, Razor Ordnance. Wraith deals one target, three projectile damage. So, when this is all combined, Wraith is going to deal three, plus two from Micro Targeting Computer, and then plus another two from Legacy. So let's use this power, Razor Ordnance, select a target. Remember, I cannot hurt Baron Blade at all, because the mobile defense platform is showing right here. It's going to do zero damage. I'm not too worried about this Elemental Redistributor, since only one um, character does lightning damage. And remember that I don't want to cycle cards into his trash if I can help it. So I'm going to hit the mobile defense platform. So Raider Ordinance adds three. Galvanize, Inspiring Presence, Targeting Computer. So he's it for seven. Goes down to three. Really good. Bunker. Bunker is like your Iron Man, but from the first Iron Man movie, the first uh, one with Robert Downey Jr. in it. If you remember, it's kind of a huge bulky suit, and it can still do all the same stuff. It just doesn't look as sleek and as cool. Um, Bunker takes some time to set up, but he has some cards to help with that. Uh, I don't see anything that's going to help with that right now, but, well, upgrade mode I think will, but... Adhesive Phone Grenade, environment cards can't be played until the start of your next turn. Great for just delaying the environment. Remember, the environment's going to get to play cards every time we go around. The environment can either do really good stuff, but it usually does pretty bad stuff. Uh, to, the, to the heroes, that is. Decommissioned hardware. Select one equipment card in your trash, put it into play. Not too useful, since your trash is empty. At the start of your turn, put three cards from your hand beneath this card. Power, destroy all cards beneath this card. Bunker deals one target, X, where X equals two times the number of cards. So by default, six. And I think it's always six. I don't think you can add cards to this after the original three are put in? I'm not sure. Upgrade mode, here you go. When this card enters play, destroy all other mode cards. You may play additional card during your power phase. You cannot use powers at the start of your turn, you may destroy this card. So this is actually not the one that I need. There's another one, um, I, I'm not sure, I don't remember the name, but that lets me draw extra, extra cards to get them in my hand. I don't have that yet, so I think I might just play Adhesive Phone Grenade just for now, just to prevent the uh, dinosaurs from showing up, at least for one turn. Environment cards can't be played, so I'll go ahead and use his power to draw a card. Here we go, recharge mode. That's the one I'm looking for. It'll let me draw extra cards. And ammo drop, also extremely good. Okay, here goes Tempest. Remember, every time... Where is this? Every time Baron Blade is dealt damage, it gets redirected. So if I use this power, which will deal one to every non-hero target, um, Baron Blade... These two will take one, which is good, but we will also take one as well. That may be worth it. I'm not sure. Ball Lightning. One target, four damage. Destroy up to two ongoing cards. There are no ongoing cards in play that I want to destroy. At the start of your turn, Tempest does each non-hero target one lightning damage. Permanent damage over time. 
15 bound shackles, increased damage dealt by Tempest to the villain target with the highest HP by 2. Very strong. Right now that's Baron Blade, obviously. Until his HP gets very low, it will stay Baron Blade. Shielding wins. Whenever a hero target would be dealt 5 or more damage from a single source, reduce that damage by 2. I don't know how many cards in Baron's Blade's de in Baron Blade's deck will do 5 or more. So, I don't think that's a good play. Should I just ball lightning to do damage to this elemental redistributor? It's going to waste that secondary, though. I actually don't like that. So I think I'll just play Gene Bounce Shackles. And uh, now this will actually increase. That was actually probably a misplay. That will actually increase the damage done to Baron Blade by 2. And remember, whenever he's hit by lightning, it gets redirected. So now I'm going to be doing 3 damage to myself. So you know what? I'll just skip Tempest's power phase. And I'll get to draw a card. Vicious Cyclone which I'll explain next time around. On to Visionary. Brain Burn. Put the villain trash on the bottom of the villain deck. Now this basically directly counters Bil uh, Baron Blade's pull the moon into the earth plan, because I can let it build up the 14 cards, play Brain Burn, and now he's back where he started. But she's going to deal herself some damage, obviously, if she does that. There's no cards in the trash, so that seems like a waste. Twist the Ether, extremely good. Whenever a target is, uh, would deal damage, change that damage type to a damage of your choice, damage type of your choice, and either reduce it or increase it by one. I can play this next to any card, so I can play it next to Legacy, next to Wraith, Bunker, anybody. Rest the Mind, play next to a target other than a character card, which, if we remember, Visionary, Legacy, Wraith, all the heroes, and Baron Blade himself are character cards, so this cannot be played here. Really, nothing is doing damage to us either, so we don't really need to worry about preventing any damage right now. I think right now, I'm just going to use Psychic Mailstorm, do two damage to everything. Um, actually, it won't do any to Baron Blade, because... Oh no, it will! Psychic Maelstrom's damage will be increased, so it will be worth it. So first up, the Mobile Defense Platform. Legacy is going to increase it by 2 to 4, and this will kill the Mobile Defense Platform. There we go. So that's one card in the trash for Baron Blade, and we need to remember that. And I'll go ahead and just let the game choose for me. It doesn't matter who takes damage, so Baron Blade will take four, and the Elemental redistribu re Redistributor will also take four. Now, since uh, we have a power we need to use, one player will draw two cards and then discard one. And Bunker needs card draw. So I'll go ahead and let Bunker draw two. Another recharge mode. We perhaps don't need that. Um, so this wasn't this wasn't the best card draw here. Whenever a villain card is destroyed, you may draw. I already have one of those. I think I'll go ahead and drop Omni Cannon. I'm actually not a huge fan of this. Just because I've never been able to make good use of it. So I'll go ahead and drop that. Another Twist the Ether, which may be useful just to boost my own. Uh... Okay, Adhesive Foam Grenade is going to, remember, prevent Insula Primalis, the environment, from playing anything. So skip back to Baron Blade. So let's see what he draws. Hasten Doom. Does each hero target two toxic damage, and then we play the top card of the villain deck. So select the first target to be dealt damage. It doesn't really matter, so I'll just choose. Now, remember that I said that the Baron Blade and Legacy were nemesis, nemesi of each other. So that will always increase damage between the two. But if Legacy ever deals damage back to Baron Blade, it will also be increased. So he's going to hasten doom two toxic damage to everyone, cover them in some kind of toxic sludge perhaps and then slash and burn oh look at that i was just saying when i was playing tempest he usually does not do five or more damage sure enough here's two instances baron blade deals the hero target with the lowest hp5 and the highest hp7 so that was unfortunate so who's gonna have the lowest uh let's send it to wraith slash and burn for five <laughs> fuck and unfortunately legacy is highest it's gonna get increased because he's nemesis so 8 to Legacy. That was very painful. Very painful. But that's okay. Um, I can deal three melee, me 3 melee damage or draw a card. Remember, that will be increased by 1, but also increased by 2, Inspiring Presence. I think I might do that. I don't really need to draw cards right now. I think I've got a decent setup for everybody. Well, actually, no, I don't. I think I'm going to play Boister Allies. So everyone will draw a card. Just let the game choose for me. It doesn't really matter the order. Sometimes it may matter, 
which is why the game brings this up. But for now, it does not. Then he uses power galvanize. Everybody else's damage has gone up. Alright, so Wraith last time picked up throwing knives. Deals three targets, one projectile damage. Not super important for now because there's only two targets out. Um, inventory Barrage was another thing that she drew. Destroy all of your equipment cards. The Wraith deals one target X projectile damage, where X is two times the number of cards destroyed this way. So if I use this, it would do four damage because I have two equipment cards out. Not that big of a deal right now, but she has a ton of equipment. I think for now, I'll go ahead and play Macro Targeting Computer, just in case the environment deck comes out with something that might hurt me. And I'll play Razor Ordinance again, but this time I'm going to use it against the Elemental Redistributor. Go ahead and kill it. One damage will be wasted. Can't always help that, however. So I'll go ahead and kill the Elemental Redistributor. And now, Tempest can do damage without wasting any, or without returning any back to us. So here we go. So here's Recharge Mode. When this card enters play, destroy all other modes. You cannot play cards or use powers, but you may draw an additional card during your draw phase. Reduce damage dealt to Bunker by one. It's going to be really important. He's not going to do anything for the next few turns, I don't think. But he needs to get into Recharge Mode quickly. So he can't use his power, but he'll draw two cards instead. Grenade Launcher, very good. Flat Cannon, very good. That was actually two great draws. Those are both good weapons. Uh, last time he drew Vicious Cyclone. This Play this next to a character card. At the start of your turn, discard up to three cards. Tempest deals that target one projectile damage for each card discarded in this way. If, this, if the target leaves play, destroy this card. Um, Tempest has several card draw mechanics, but he doesn't have them right now, so I don't think I'm going to... I don't think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bother with Vicious Cycling just yet. I will just go for straight up some damage, however. So he's going to do 9. So he does 5 with Lightning Slash to 1 target. Legacy increased by 1. Inspiring Presence from Legacy increased by 1. And his Gene Bound Shackles adds 2. So this is 9 total damage to Baron Blade. He doesn't have anything to redirect or counter Lightning damage. So we'll take the full 9. Extremely potent. Down to 27. So we're, uh, I believe he starts with 40 or 50. Yeah, I think he starts at 40, so he's getting there. And then I can use my regular power as well, which, again, increased by 4. So even in and, itself, in, in and of itself, will do 5 damage. His base power will do 5 to every single target that comes out. It's really, really good. Uh, Chain Lightning gets drawn, and... I guess I can play Twist the Ether. It will, show, it will slow the game down a little bit. And I was trying to make sure that this first game went a little faster. Um, usually with my other series, I, I try to limit it to 30 minutes. Just um, just because attention spans are not super long, and there's obviously a ton of stuff to watch. And, you know, you, you want your content to be a little bit more bite-sized than an hour or hour or two hours or hour and a half. But these games can go very long sometimes. Um, so we'll see. I, I might not bother keeping track of the time for these. Let's see. Let's go ahead and put it on Baron Blade. So any damage he does to us, we can slow down a little bit. Use my power. I want to try... I'm, I'm going to give it to Bunker again, I think, because I want to try to get... Well, maybe not. I think the Wraith needs it now. We want to try to get her a utility belt, which will let her use two powers at once. She didn't get it, however. Um, I think I will drop in for an eyepiece because I have legacy if I ever want to control the villain's deck. So I can just discard in for an eyepiece without too much to worry about. And um, that'll be it for Visionary. So now the environment will finally get to go. And Rage T-Rex. Oh my. At the end of the environment turn, this card deals the target other than itself with the second highest HP. Five melee damage. So, second highest, Baron Blade's HP is actually lower than ours is. So, it's not Bunker, he's the highest it will either be Tempest or Visionary. It's going to take a damage right here. I'll give it to Visionary, it's fine. Oh, remember, Mega Computer from uh, Wraith actually reduces this damage by one, so that's nice. She'll take only four. Back to Baron Blade's turn. Another device, Powered Remote Turret. At the end of the villain turn, this card deals each hero target two projectile damage. 
Increase damage dealt by this card by one for each mobile defense platform in play. Thank goodness there's none. So everybody's going to take a little bit of damage here. But I'll just, I'll just let the game choose. Now see, this is not doing an increased one damage because the remote powered turret is what's doing the damage. Baron Blade is not. There are some cards that will say the villain deals the damage, but this is not going to get increased by the nemesis buff. So that's actually a good thing. Again, everybody will take two. Recharge mode, reduce that by one. And that's it. That's all Baron Blade got to do. Okay. So I think, let's see, I, I drew, what did I draw last time? Oh, Fortitude. Yeah, just reduce damage dealt to Legacy by one. Really good. Makes him tanky. Um, so he ha oh, he has four in his trash. Okay, so I need to, I need to keep track of that. I'm not really worried. He's almost halfway through this phase. So I'm not too worried here. I think I'll use Thok to go ahead and hit. Oh, and, and mm, should I even bother with the T-Rex now? I don't think I will for now. Go ahead and use Thok to deal four damage. Then use his power to galvanize. And then we're on to Wraith's turn. I need to deal with this T-Rex somehow. But I don't think that I have any cards just to straight up destroy environment right now. I do not know. I think what I'll do with Wrath, or Wraith, huh, Wraith is play Trust Fund. Let's her draw four cards and then discard two. I'm really looking for a micro-targeting computer. Or, uh, not micro-targeting. Looking for utility belt, which did not pop up. That's okay. Again, I'll go ahead and toss infrared eyepiece, which I'll just drag up to the trash. And... Uh, another, a throwing knives, I think, is fine. Okay, should go ahead and use Razor Ordnance. I'm actually not going to deal damage here, because remember that Tempest has his power, which will deal 5 to everyone. So I'm actually going to do 7 to the T-Rex in an effort to bring it down into kill range. So we'll do 7, taking into account all the buffs. And it's down to 8. Um, do I want to destroy recharge mode? So he has... He has upgrade mode, which is really good. That will let me play two cards during the play phase. Flat cannon will do one target three projectile damage, and this will do one target two projectile damage, and then the second two, and then a third one, so it kind of AoE or bounces, I guess you could say. So those are actually really good. I would be totally fine with jumping to uh, upgrade mode, so I think I will go ahead and just, especially because I have another recharge if I want to get rid of it. So yes. Then I will play upgrade mode, which this turn I'm only going to get to play one extra card, but that's fine. Flat cannon it is, but I don't get to... Oh, there's turret mode. That's the next mode that I need, which will let me play two powers at once, or use two powers at once. Alright, so let's see. Electrical Storm might be very good, uh, because Legacy is just going to constantly boost damage. So three damage to everything every single turn is pretty good. But I might just try Chain Lightning. Right now, Chain Lightning will do four, uh, five, six. So I could easily kill off this T-Rex and the powered remote turret and do significant damage to Baron Blade. So I think that that's what I will do is Chain Lightning. As you can see, I have a pretty strong offensive team here. And like I was saying in my last video, I wanted at least my first few games to not be a terrible challenge. Because if anybody is watching this and they don't know how to play at all, I don't want the rules to be super advanced. So I picked somewhat more basic heroes, some of the starter ones, going up in, uh, you know, at easy difficulty level 1. And I'm obviously going through these a little fast, just because games can take a long time. But I want to try to be as efficient as possible while not being confusing, and hopefully that's coming across. So I think first I will do eight to Baron Blade. I don't. I only need three damage to the T-Rex because his power will end up doing five. So I'll confirm eight to Baron Blade, and then I'm gonna lose some, um, lose some DPS here. But but it's not even a lot. I say DPS, not DPS. There's no damage per second here, but I'll lose a little bit of damage. And then he's gonna use his power doesn't really matter. I'll just pick Baron Blade first. He'll take five. And the 
temp uh, the T-Rex will take three. Exactly enough to kill him. So it turns out I didn't waste too much damage there. To the end. Oh, we picked up another lightning slash. That's fantastic. So, Visionary picked up Decoy Projection. Whenever the Visionary will be dealt damage, redirect that to this card. That's your tank a little bit. Hmm. Only have one target. Uh, I'm not within threat range of the moon coming down yet, so Brain Burn does not help me. Which, again, Brain Burn River lets you empty out the villain trash so, uh, and shuffle it back into their deck. Or put it on the bottom of their deck, but she'll take damage for each one of those. Rest the mind, I just don't, I have no targets to play rest the mind on. So I just think I will play decoy projection. Who's just got a small amount of cards? I guess I'll let Tempest to get the card draw this turn. No, you know what? I'll give it to Visionary. Let herself do it. Okay. I need to discard one. I really don't think I'm going to need Brain Burn at all. As soon as he takes nine more damage, he's going to flip, and he will no longer be able to bring the moon crashing down. So I just go ahead and toss Brain Burn. Okay, back to the environment. River of Lava. At the end of the environment turn, which again will happen immediately after uh, this, each hero may destroy one of their equipment cards. Deal any hero that does not destroy an equipment card. Five fire damage. At the start of the environment turn, if each player discards the top three cards of their deck, destroy this card. So this card will sit into play, forcing me to discard or destroy equipment or dealing damage to me unless I discard cards, which I certainly will do. Um, I think I can... Let, let me just look at HP. 17, 25, 22. Okay, well, I'll, I'll probably drop one of Wraiths then. Mega Computer, not that big a deal. So she'll drop one. See what does Bunker have? Mm, I want him. I want him to play. Well, he'll. Let's see. He has to discard this anyway, or he will need to discard anyway, because I want to get turret mode at some point. That's fine. I'll have. I'll have Bunker as well. Discard one. Genebound Shackles. I think I'll. I'll skip that. His HP is high enough. He can take the five damage. And uh, it doesn't really matter. The order in which people take damage is just going to do five fire. Looks like the decoy projection actually took that, which was nice. Decoy projection was destroyed. And when the games do get more complicated in the future as the difficulty goes up, the, the matches will take longer, for sure. Because I will spend more time analyzing and trying to make the best play. I probably will make several misplays as these lower difficulty um, villains are... are um, are being played. Let's see. So Hasten Doom, two to everybody. Doesn't really matter the order here. So this is where Twist the Ether comes into play. I get to pick the type of damage. Some characters have things that will reduce damage. Like Tempest can select his damage type, so he can turn his lightning damage into, let's say, psychic damage or radiant damage. And then it could also reduce that damage at the same time. So if I had that card, it would be useful at this point to turn it into that specific type. But I don't have it, it doesn't matter. I can't unfortunately... It's going to ask me this for each instance of damage, and then it's going to ask me who, how the damage should get modified. So, there's going to be a lot of pop-ups here. I'm going to go through them pretty quickly. Just realize that Twist the Ether, whenever Baron Blade does damage, Twist the Ether is going to go off. And I'm going to reduce it by one. It's going to let me choose the type, which I change it to cold, and then it's going to be reduced by one. Same thing, I'm just going to make it cold and reduce it by one. And that's just going to have to happen for each instance. I wish I could set it to be like, you know, for all instances of this damage. There's probably some some edge case where, you know, doing this, doing that would actually break something. And so that's why we have to go through it one step at a time. Oh, another slash and burn. I'm actually taking a lot of damage here. That's another five damage to the lowest HP target and seven to the highest. Uh, so we'll just do cold again. Let them choose how it gets, the order in which uh, the types get applied. There we go. Just cold again, reduce by one. That's fine. So, ow, that was that was very bad for me. All right. Well. I'm 
not sure the best play here. I think I'll use Thok. One target, three melee damage. This will do, the Flying Smash will do three targets, three melee damage, which is just not useful because only one target take damage. So he'll definitely flip on this turn. I have no, I have no doubt that he's going to flip to his other side. Unfortunately, his damage will, oh, this is actually good. Motivational Charge, which is the card that Lexi just drew. Legacy deals one target to melee damage, and each hero regains one HP. It's very nice. I can't use it until next turn, however. Go ahead and galvanize for now. And then he draws for the end of his turn. Alright, I need four damage to uh, knock him into his next phase. Suit yourself may be worth it. She's at 16 HP. That's definitely the lowest. not the lowest. Wow, Legacy's at seven. Actually, Throat Jab, I think, will be very good here deal one target to melee damage, and that target that is dealt damage in this way cannot do damage to the start of your next turn. So I think I'll actually play that, and I'll hit Baron Blade. This is going to flip him automatically, so we'll go ahead and take a moment. Oh good, he actually does still have Twisted either, so that's good. Let's go ahead and take a moment to see what happens when he flips. When flipped to this side, Baron Blade's maximum HP is 30, as we can see there. Baron Blade is restored to 30 HP. The villain trash is placed on top of the villain deck. All three copies of mobile defense platform are moved to the villain trash, and the villain deck is shuffled. At the end of the villain turn, Baron Blade deals the hero target with the highest HP, 5 energy damage. So his damage went up rather significantly, so I'm going to have to burn him down. That's exactly what I'm going to start doing right now. 7 damage to him because of Legacy's Galvanize and Inspiring Presence, and the ever-faithful micro-targeting computer to the, uh, as added to the original three, to do seven. And that's almost a third of his HP gone. Impromptu Invention, that's going to let me search her deck for any equipment card, which will be very useful here in a little bit. Um, I, th hmm, I don't want to destroy upgrade mode, do I? No. As you can see, <laughs> Bunker hasn't done much this game. Without correct draws, he's not going to do a lot, unfortunately. Um, he's stopped the environment from performing one action, but other than that, he's done no damage to the boss, and I think he's drawn one card using a power. So, unfortunately, this wasn't the, uh... Wait, didn't I have another... Didn't I have another weapon somewhere? Oh, I had to discard it. Oh, no, I discarded that. That was actually a big misplay. I discarded the flat cannon, and not the... Oh, this is because this is an ongoing and not an equipment. Well, I shot myself in the foot a little bit here. But we can use decommissioned hardware because we have upgrade mode. So decommissioned hardware will let us take our flak cannon out of the trash, into play, and grenade launcher will play it. But because I have upgrade mode, I skip my power phase. So again, Bunker has done nothing. Um, he's he's now the, uh, the has the highest HP, so he will start taking some damage, which is good. He is a good tank. He does have some things that will help him tank. I think now's a perfect time for Tempest to play Shielding Winds. Remember, whenever a hero target will be dealt 5 or more from a single source, reduce that damage by 2. Baron Blade is going to hit by 5. By the way, I had never mentioned this anywhere. This little 5 with the stars around it, whenever it's blue with the stars, that basically is equal to the number of heroes, or the number of players, if you were playing the tabletop version. The number of heroes that started the game. So I'm playing five, one, two, three, four, five. So this will always be five. Large numbers of cards, and that's how they balance it between th if you're playing three heroes and five heroes, is a lot of cards will have their damage adjusted based on the number of heroes that are playing. So because I am playing with five, this will do five. I need to play Shielding Winds to help reduce some of that damage. Use Squall, which is just his base power, to deal five. He's already almost at half HP, which is fantastic. Alright, Visionary. I think I'll just do some damage. Mass Levitation gives her a power until the start of your next turn. Reduce damage dealt by the environment by three. Actually, interesting. If I play Mass Levitation and I use this power... This will be get no okay that actually order is incorrect. So I was originally thinking you know Tempest here again will reduce anything five or more by two. 
and this is doing 5 damage, the rear of lava at the end of the environment turn. I was thinking I could pair that with mass levitation, so it does 5 damage, Tempest reduces it by 2, and then mass levitation reduces it by 3. Unfortunately, this power has to be played now, and so this will actually reduce it by 3, or by, yes, by 3? Yes, it will reduce the environment damage by 3 before Tempest even gets to check shielding wins. So this is actually going to be a waste if I play it. So that didn't work out there. But there's lots of instances where I can kind of manipulate the order that things occur to get a, a positive outcome for myself. But that is not the case here. So I'll go ahead and just do some damage with Psychic Maelstrom. It's every target deals two damage, but unfortunately, I only have one target. So I, it's in one turn, I knocked him down below half. That's good. That means I might be able to just finish him off completely next turn. Let's go ahead and use the power on the uh, poor bunker. Let's just try to give him more to do. <laughs> Another ammo drop. Auxiliary power source. Just go ahead and toss that. At this point, this late in the game, it's not really going to matter if I have uh, extra play. Uh, so yes, I'm going to go ahead and just discard. I have every player discard three from the top of their deck, which will get rid of the river of lava. And this is happening at the start of the environment turn. And remember that the environment turn goes like this, and the villain turn as well. Start of turn, play a card, go through the cards that are out, end of turn. And end of turn actually kind of goes before that, depending on what's happening. Some things will say start of turn, some things will say end of turn. So, But yes, start of turn, we'll all just drop three from our deck. Okay, it didn't show me the cards that were discarded. Oh, another Enraged T-Rex. And um, the second highest is going to be uh, Visionary, so she'll take... 5, minus 2, the shielding wins. Great, worked really well. Only did 3 to her. Now Baron Blade is going to go. Each, oh, another Hasten Doom. Throat Jab, however, prevented Baron Blade from dealing any damage. Yes, that was really good. Blade Battalion, his first minion. At the end of the villain turn, this card deals the hero target with the highest HP. X melee damage, where X is the current HP of this card. Perfect, it's going to be 5, which is going to get reduced. Throat Jab did no damage. Uh, and that Throat Jab, by the way, was for his always dealing 5 damage thing. So the Blade Battalion's going to hit Bunker, but Shielding Winds protected too, so he took 3. Turns out Shielding Winds is really good when you play as 5. So I think it's time now. We're just going to go ahead and throw everything we have at Baron Blade to finish this battle. So I'll do Flying Smash. I'm going to ignore the T-Rex. Uh, so yes, ne uh, Legacy Nemesis, plus one. Inspiring Pleasance, Presence, plus one, so it'll do five. He has nine left. I'll just go ahead and deal a bit more damage out. Let Legacy fly around and beat on anything he wants to. And he'll galvanize just for good measure. So this was the card that I was looking for all game for... Uh, Wraith is Impromptu Invention. Invention. Let's her draw a card, which invert IP is not a big deal. Actually, did I play it? I think I played one of these before. So if we, we've already talked about what it does. It'll let me search my deck, draw a utility belt, which I definitely want to draw, and put it into play. So now she can use two powers, and I still get to draw. So I'll go ahead and use, or, uh, or not draw, I get, I get to play. So play throwing knives, now I can use two powers. Razor Ordnance, which we've been using all game to just destroy Baron Blade. We'll go ahead and do seven. I think this will be the end of him right here. Do seven, and then we'll use Throwing Knives to do three targets, one damage. We'll go ahead and do him last. So do five. I'll do five to each, I think. Let's go ahead and wipe out the Blade Battalion. And then, he only has two left. Here it is. The final attack on Baron Blade. And there you go. You get the victory music. And you can kind of see Baron Blade in his kind of beat up suit there. Awesome. Well, that was the first game of Sentinels of the Multiverse, the video game. Um, I think we did pretty well. Legacy got a little low. Um, but he is his nemesis. He is Baron Blade's nemesis. So it makes sense that he's going to take a bit more damage than everybody else uh, for each time he, he takes damage. Uh, thanks, guys, so much for joining me. In the next episode, I'll probably take on Omnitron. He's another difficulty one. Um, another difficulty one villain. And I'll probably try to use all new heroes. 
as well, just so you can see a nice variety. But thanks so much for joining me for this episode, and I'll see you next time.